Welcome to part three of this series where we are strapping a GT2860 RS to my bone stock D16 Y4. Now at this point we've already installed the turbo, we've made our water and oil lines and we've fabricated a stainless steel dump pipe to match the rest of our exhaust system. So in this video we finish off with the induction side. A simple fuel system upgrade, we mount the intercooler and we fabricate the rest of our intercooler pipes. Let's get straight into it. All right, so for this build, I've decided to keep the stock fuel rail, which does limit the lengths of injectors we can choose. The reason is because inside the fuel rail, the outlet, I believe is like an 11 millimeter outlet. So uh, when sizing your injector in terms of your length, I think the best way is to go with a short injector uh, because this is a 14 millimeter ring. So once you have a short injector, which will seat inside the manifold, you then have the choice of sizing up your injector top hats. I don't recall the exact height of this, but I will put it up on the screen. Um, so once this manifold is seated inside the injector, this top hat can go on top and this 11 millimeter O-ring will seat inside our fuel rail. So just a note on injector flow. In part one, I said that we had purchased a set of 1250ccs. Uh, this one is actually a 731cc injector and we've actually done this kit on another vehicle and it did struggle with low speed drivability. So this is the 1250cc injector for my car that I haven't used. We are gonna put the set aside for another build, um, but uh, they are the same physical dimensions. Really they're the same injector, but this one has been modified to 1250ccs. So we're gonna downgrade to the 731ccs, but it should be plenty for the stock motor we have. So let's put that aside. Let's pull out uh, the fuel injectors and then we can fit in our new setup. So I've cleaned the manifold and we've removed the old grotty uh, OEM injectors. I'm going to be reusing our original square O-rings. So uh, we're going to put them back in. I usually use WD-40 as a lubricant and just, just a bit everywhere. So I'm just going to show you how the injectors sit and then we're going to install them onto the rail and then down onto our manifold. So this is our Bosch injector and we are going to replace this 14 millimeter bottom o-ring with a 15 millimeter o-ring because it sits more snug inside the manifold. So let's pull that one off. Can't really tell but this black o-ring is slightly thicker just by one mil. And onto the injector. All right so just going to fit it to this cylinder going to pull out the square seal, pop it over the injector and it'll sit perfect and snug in there. There we go. And I'll show you guys what it looks like with the 14 millimeter. As you can see, that's excessive movement. So we're going to install the rest of the injectors with the new O-rings and then we will put on the top hats. Here we go. So I've bolted down the fuel rail and something to check is to make sure the injector has some movement. You definitely don't want the injector to be pinched in there and these injectors are seated perfectly. What I had to do was add two little M6 washers just to make that difference in height so that the fuel rail is sitting perfectly uh, and we're not putting the injector on any of an angle. What we'll need to do now is to modify the wiring. So this is a US car, US car connector and this is our factory uh, factory connector which is not compatible. So what we'll need to do is rewire what's on the car. So the manifold and the injectors are back on the car and this is the connector we'll need to delete and repin and that will not plug into our new injector. So what you need to get yourself is a new connector. Uh, so this is an USCAR connector and it usually comes with a locking clip the two terminals and those two dust covers. Now the best way to do it is to buy your connectors and the clip separately and adapt them to your existing loom. 
uh, but if you don't have the confidence with crimping or you don't have the right pliers, you're better off just buying the pigtails with the two wires and soldering them onto the loom. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys how to install the new connectors. All right, so I've gone ahead and done three of the injector connectors and got the last one to do of the OEM uh, style. So I wanna keep the factory insulation. So what we're gonna do is actually deepen this to get as much cable as possible. I don't wanna shorten it anymore. To deepen this connector, you have to remove this locking tab. So just come under here, remove this blue tab. Inside the connector, you'll see a tab holding onto the terminal. So you just insert your small flathead in there insert there and then just twist a little bit to lift the tab off and then you should be able to pull that terminal out so just like that we've got one of the terminals there again insert the flat head into the terminal and then you're going to twist to lift off the tab and all you have to do is just pull that out and our connector is unpinned even though these pins look like they might fit onto the new connectors they won't so we're gonna have to cut them off and i really don't want to shorten too much of the wiring so I'm going to cut it off right there on the insulator. These are the two little dust caps, pop them on to the wires first. So to crimp these terminals you're going to need a few special crimping pliers. So I just insert my terminal in there like that, so it's ready to crimp. Insert the contact into the pin and then squeeze down. That's all it is. So pull test, all good. With the back crimp, it crimps the dust cap and the insulation of the wire. And we're going with the blue pliers on number one. Gentle squeeze, don't have to be too light this one. There we go. And that's one of the crimps done. So with these two pins crimped, we need to insert that into our new connector. Uh, now, as far as I understand, there is no polarity when it comes to injectors but I'm trying to keep the yellow and black wire which I'm going to describe as the ground on the top part so pin number one on our new connector so just all you have to do is insert it in the right orientation where the tab sits on top of the contact and then insert your pin so you can see that bit of contact inside my connector give it a pull both of them are locked on by that plastic tab there so we're going to insert our locking uh, I don't know what it is a locking tab back in and these are ready for our new injectors. Earlier today we installed our new injectors and also modified the wiring to suit them uh, and now because we're injecting so much more fuel into the engine we need a higher flowing fuel pump to deliver fuel to the rail. So I'm going to grab the fuel pump out of the car uh, and then we're going to head over to the bench and I'll show you how simple of an upgrade this is. This is the fuel pump which came out of the Civic. Better get that changed out, looks pretty old. All right, so this is the fuel pump out of my Civic, and this is the Walbro 255. Pretty much the largest pump you can go to on these Civics before needing to upgrade the wiring. And you look at the diameter of the wiring there, you can see, you know, they're not gonna hold much amperage. Um, so yeah, something like this, the 255, is a very simple upgrade, but anything over like a 255, maybe like a 340 or a 460 liter, 525 liter fuel pump, you definitely need a relay to power that pump. The beauty of the 255, uh, it is pretty much bolt-on. Uh, there is no wiring we need to do. Even the connector plugs right into our new fuel pump. Uh, so we'll quickly get that smashed out, get the pump back in before I gas myself in this garage. Have a look at the connectors. They're exactly the same thing. Just got a slightly longer pump on this side, so we're gonna to have to trim that hose, and then it'll bolt straight in, and we should be good to go. I'm gonna cut off a bit of this hose just to account for the extra height from the, the new fuel pump. It's about a centimeter and a half. Pop that hose clamp back on. All right, just put that aside. Just gonna assemble this pump. So using the stock rubber from the factory fuel pump, just pop that straight on, and you'll be able to put on your new filter and we're just going to have to put a little circlip to hold the filter on just get a little socket put that right on top you can just hammer that on you might be able to see that little circlip she's in Once 
once it's seated, just pull the pump, push the pump all the way down so it's snug, and you'll see that rubber bottom out on the bracket. Push the connector onto the new pump. And that's it. The most simple fuel pump upgrade you can do. Now that's done, we are moving on to fitting the intercooler and unfortunately I've lost a few clips in the process. Anyways, it should still make sense from here on. All right, so these two brackets got them tacked into place, puts the intercooler in a really nice position. So quickly show you guys that. And it puts it in a really good position. You can just see even the contour in the radiator support. It's kind of like a cutout for this intercooler. It's almost like it was built for it. So yeah, no problems with the way the piping's gonna run. Outlets from the sides and wrapping around to the engine bay. So yeah, so the bottom ones, I'm gonna throw some more welds in them, pen it up, and the top bracket, I will make a bracket, more like a keeper bracket, just to hold it in place against the radiator support. Alrighty, looking so stealthy and black. It looks good. No one's ever gonna know. So the way I'm gonna run my intercooler piping will start from the turbo. So it's gonna discharge downwards underneath those condenser brackets there. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I am still planning to put the condenser back in. Uh, so underneath those, it'll run along the radiator support and then uh, in front of the coolant bottle here, not coolant, the washer bottle. Uh, and I have removed that toe point, you'll notice, but I have kept the other side, so it's gonna be enough. From here, it'll do a 90, 90 out here, and then a 90 into the intercooler inlet. And just once again, appreciating how nicely this intercooler sits. Uh, it looks almost like it's molded to the radiator spot. Um, so yeah, from this side of the intercooler, the outlet will have a 90 coming off there, I have bent this lip back just to give us a bit more clearance on the pipe. Uh, and we're gonna have a 90 here and then a 45 shooting between the torque mount and the chassis rail. Uh, from then it will be a 90 back up and then 275s uh, on a separate pipe back to the throttle body. Um, so yeah, uh, it is a bit of work. I wanna show you that I have also removed that transmission torque bracket for now. And the reason why is because it doesn't allow for much room for the intercooler piping to sit. I've got it over here and I will show you why. So this is the factory D series bracket uh, with the bolt there, which I will reuse. And this is a low profile bracket you can buy off AliExpress. I believe it was like $15. And this is one that I've modified to suit for the D series. Now you notice the difference between these two is that I have enlarged these two holes to suit the D-Series gearbox. Uh, you'll only be able to mount it to the two holes. The other hole is just not gonna sit. Um, and I've also modified and welded on this nut. It's not pretty, uh, but it's definitely gonna get the job done. It is really sturdy there. So once that's in there, give us a lot of clearance. Uh, the bracket is essentially just gonna sit as an L to our torque mount. Um, so yeah. I have obviously done this a few times, so uh, I will show you guys a bit of the process. So enjoy this bit of a time lapse and I'll show you the end result.
so last night I got the piping all watered up and I gotta say this package is looking so complete and I'm very happy with it. Um, so I like how the intercooler piping sits inside the chassis rail. Uh, in my old setup I had a B-series turbo. I did run the piping to uh, that hole there where the stock intake box used to go and the piping runs just to that intercooler. So that is an option for you guys if you don't want to modify or remove that um, transmission mount. So just showing you that bracket and it allows for the piping to sit in the more comfortable position so it's not pushed all the way forward into the radiator. I guess it also allows us to run a slightly bigger radiator. This is not slightly, this is a lot bigger uh, with OEM fan. And I've also left plenty of room here to refit our condenser with the fan. In Australia, it does get quite hot, so I really wanna keep my AC. Yeah, it's looking really good. So this brings us to the end of part three of this uh, turbo series. Now, as a recap in this video, we sorted out the fuel system, and I hope that shows that you can have a pretty beefy fuel system for a D series uh, with some very simple modifications to the stock setup. We also finished off the fabrication with the intercooler piping, uh, and you know what? This car is ready to start in a day and a half's time. I've planned on Saturday that we're gonna get this fired up. I'm gonna take it for a road tune uh, and hopefully get it ready to do some kilometers before we head to the dyno. So if you like any of the content, make sure you subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know and I'll get back to you. I'll see you guys in the next video.